Hello everyone, I welcome you dear students to the first session for our grade 9 geography and our first lesson is earth as a planet. I am Dr. Sanjeev Padvi dear student and I assure you you will thoroughly enjoy this lesson. It's one of the very wonderful lesson that you can ever study in your life. As you can see here name of the lesson is earth as a planet okay and you must have studied about it that earth is a planet okay if the question is asked to you what are you looking at this some of you might have guessed it correctly saying that it's a galaxy that's true what is a galaxy dear student galaxy is an absolutely huge cluster of stars where billions of stars are present and this galaxy that you see here is milky way galaxy it is an arm of a milky way galaxy in which our earth is present now this each dot here dear student that you see over here is itself a star and around that star to search for a planet is absolutely difficult very difficult okay of course a scientist have discovered few other planets outside our solar system also but you must have realized after looking at this picture that searching for the planet outside the solar system is so difficult because the stars are billions and billions kilometer away from us to see them itself you require extremely huge telescopes and now around these stars okay each dot itself looks so 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 small to search for a planet becomes very difficult anyway our topic is earth as a planet so what exactly is a planet so the simplest definition of a planet is that it is an object now suppose this is a star so a planet which is revolving around a star is termed as a planet however every object that revolves around a star is not a planet dear student okay in order to be called it as a planet it should have sufficient mass it should be having uh, quite a big size okay so earth belongs to a category of a planet okay a planet is basically a an object which has sufficient mass which has its own orbit and which keeps on revolving in that orbit around the star so earth is one such a planet and if we are try to search for our planet earth in this huge milky way it's absolutely difficult okay but we should be so thankful that yes we are here we are surviving here on earth and god has really kept us wonderfully well because in such a huge universe our existence is really very small but now today we are in a position to understand our universe but before that we should know what is so special about our earth as a planet now by the way this milky way dear students if you uh, look at it okay it uh, looks like a firecracker that keeps on moving around itself it's a spinning wheel like structure this milky way is consisting of as i said extremely large number of stars one estimate say around 120 100 thousand million stars are present with that there is absolutely huge amount of dust and also lot of gases are present and this milky way galaxy dear students when you look it from the top from the top it looks like a spinning wheel if you go under it you, and, and if you look above it you will find it looking like a spinning wheel and that's why we call it by the name 
spiral galaxy. Now, if you look at this spiral galaxy, you will find that this galaxy is having four arms. Okay, arm one, this is arm two, this is arm three, and this is arm number four. And our sun is present in the arm which is called as Orion Spur about 27,000 light years away from the center. Okay, let us look at this next picture. Here is a center of a galaxy. You can see here one of the arm of the galaxy called as Sputum Centaurus. And you find here another arm of the galaxy here. Its name is Orion Spur, and our sun is present about 27,000 light years away from the center. Please remember, light year is a distance traveled by light in one year. Let me tell you in simple words light speed is. 3 lakh kilometer in one second. So, if you start traveling with a speed of 3 lakh kilometer in one second, whatever distance you reach after one year, that will be one light year. So, that way when you start counting, in order to go to the center of our Milky Way, you will require 27,000 light years. So, it is an extremely large distance and humans have yet not found any way to do that. It means to reach to the center of the galaxy or moving out of the galaxy. The fastest vehicle that these which, which the rockets which are made by human beings can travel at a speed of at maximum speed of 75,000 kilometer per hour. If you travel at a speed of 1 lakh, 3 lakh kilometer per second, then after 27,000 years, we will be able to reach to the center of the galaxy. And to come out of our galaxy, we will require around 23,000 light years. Okay. Anyway, so Sun is present in the, one of the arm of the Milky Way galaxy and name of this arm is Orion Spur. Okay, and around this sun, our Earth is present somewhere revolving around it. Now, as I told you, astronomers, okay, now if you look at these stars, dear student, this is just huge in number. Astronomers have estimated that in our Milky Way galaxy, there are around 100,000 million stars and how many galaxies are there in our Milky Way galaxy around 100,000 million stars. So, how many galaxies are there? So, so far in an observable universe, they have estimated around 125 billion galaxies. Oh my God, 125 billion galaxies. And out of these 125 billion galaxies, one of the galaxy is our Milky Way galaxy, which is home for our planet Earth. Okay, dear students, universe is just unimaginably huge in size, absolutely huge in size. Okay, now here you are looking at one of the arm of this. Milky Way galaxy and of course it is Orion Spur that is visible to us if the sky is very clear we may be able to see that one. Now our solar system I hope you must be knowing consisting of sun in the center and there are eight planets dear students revolving around the sun. There are total eight planets revolving around the sun and you must be knowing their names but besides these eight planets there are many many asteroids which are countless in number their sizes from few meters up to some hundreds of kilometer long so some of them are very small two k two meter three meter up to hundreds of meters and some of them are even in kilometer of 
वाइड ओके तो देर आर काउंटलेस नंबर ऑफ एस्टेरॉइड्स देर आर कॉमेट्स ऑल्सो एंड ऑफकोर्स देर आर एट प्लैनेट्स दैट आर रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड दिस सन प्लीज रिमेंबर आर अर्थ इज द फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट प्लैनेट ओके वी आर फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट एंड प्लीज रिमेंबर अर्थ इज हैविंग द लैंड Venus is having land, Mars is having the land, and the Mercury is also having the land on it. So such a planets which are having a land, we call them terrestrial planet. So among these terrestrial planets, which are four in number, Earth is the largest terrestrial planet. Whereas other planets don't have the land; they have they are gaseous planets. Okay, and uh, of course the largest you must be knowing that is Jupiter. now this asteroids they keep on revolving around the sun and they are present between mars and jupiter between mars and jupiter these planets these are not planets uh, these asteroids are present okay which are extremely small size to large size one and sometimes these asteroids get pulled towards the earth by the gravitational force and in case they come towards the earth they can cause very great danger to the planet earth okay if they strike our earth you must be knowing that uh, the dinosaurs disappeared from earth because of the impact of one of the asteroid okay thanks to the uh, moon the student that is revolving around the earth that is able to pull these asteroids before they fall on earth okay anyway asteroids are many in number and they are moving in between mars and jupiter planet now this is this is one the the photograph of those uh, asteroids as i said extremely small to very huge in size now when viewed from space okay our earth appears bluish in color and that is why we also call it by the name blue planet we call our earth by the name blue planet because it appears bluish in color and the reason is our earth is surrounded uh, by gases of course but 71% of our earth is covered with water and that's why earth appears as blue in color okay now our earth is uh, consisting of three spheres three spheres and in those three sphere a fourth sphere has originated the first sphere of the earth is called lithosphere which is made up of rocks hydrosphere made up of water atmosphere made up of gases and these three spheres together have resulted into origin of one more sphere called as biosphere where living things are present now this lithosphere dear student is the outer most layer of the earth where you and me live it is the outer most layer where you see the land on which we construct houses we construct roads buildings we construct dams on this lithosphere the rivers flow the lakes are present okay oceans are also uh, present um, okay to some extent on the surface of this lithosphere okay of course that extremely huge piece of water will be called as hydrosphere but that that ocean will be definitely present on a surface so that outermost surface of the earth is called as lithosphere we also call it by the name earth's crust which is made up of three major rocks igneous rocks metamorphic rocks and sedimentary rocks this layer is very important dear students because we live on it plants grow on it and human activities are carried out on this sphere only now hydrosphere is now second sphere as i told you consisting of water now 
water present in lakes in rivers water present in seas oceans all this water together we call it by the name hydrosphere and earth's 71 percent part is covered with hydrosphere 71 percent part of the earth is covered with hydrosphere which is a very huge part in fact our earth's name should have been water instead of earth reason is earth means soil and how much soil is present if 71 percent is water so 29 percent is land that means water is present more in quantity than land therefore some people also call our planet earth by not the name earth but by the name water planet because so much part of earth is covered with water of course water is essential for our survival every living thing in nature whether plant or animal or microorganism all need water for their survival and if life is present on earth one of the reason is hydrosphere now let us look at the third sphere of our earth called as atmosphere now from the surface of earth dear student if this is the surface of the earth okay and if we start going up atmosphere is found almost up to 1600 kilometer up it spreads to a very high extent almost up to the height of 1600 kilometer this atmosphere of earth consists of extremely important gases called nitrogen second most important gas present is oxygen third most important gas present in atmosphere is carbon dioxide and also it consists of other inert gases okay hydrogen is also present dust is present in our atmosphere and this atmosphere supports the life and it also protects our earth from ultraviolet rays very dangerous harmful rays coming from the sun are obstructed by atmosphere and we people here on earth are protected from this ultraviolet radiation because ozone layer of earth stops them and protect us dear student the next topic is now about shape of the earth okay shape now previously people thought that earth is flat if you go on a ground okay and when you look at the ground it appears flat to you similarly people in the beginning were afraid of traveling far because they used to think that if the earth is flat like this and if you are traveling in one direction so when you will come to the edge of the earth you will fall down so they were afraid of traveling that way and they thought that earth is uh, flat flat but however later on people the began to think that earth must not be flat but be spherical in shape because when they looked at the moon they saw it spherical in shape when they looked at the sun they thought sun is also spherical in shape so then they got an idea that earth must also be spherical in shape okay and the idea was first proposed by a very great mathematician called as pythagoras okay you must have heard of his um pythagoras theorem okay 500 bc that means almost 2500 years ago he was able to uh, propose that earth must be spherical and he got an idea so now please dear student remember this is moon okay and he found that this part of the moon is now appearing spherical in shape so he guessed that earth must be casting the shadow on the moon and if you look at the shadow that shadow appears spherical in shape so he called it by the name terminator terminator means the line that divides the 
part of the moon which is in light from the part which is in darkness so this line appeared to him spherical so he got an idea that earth must also be spherical in shape because spherical objects cast circular shadow you take a ball in your hand and you stand against the light and if you see the shadow on the wall over there okay if you take it actually in your hand you will you, you if you uh, make the light fall on that uh, ball the shadow will be circular in shape so he got an idea that earth must also be spherical in shape because it is casting the shadow which is having a circular shape so this is how he was the first one to propose it okay then second uh, now then there was another a very famous person dear student you can see his picture his name is anaxagoras okay and this anaxagoras was able to uh, find out the reason for an eclipse okay during an eclipse earth cast its shadow on moon or moon cast its shadow on earth so when the shadow of the earth will fall on the moon that shadow also looked spherical in shape so therefore he was the second person who also decided to tell or decided to agree with the fact that was proposed by pythagoras that earth must be spherical in shape see if this is the sun if here is the earth and let us say here is the moon so when the sunlight will start from the sun okay this way so earth's shadow will fall here on the moon this shadow will fall on the moon and this shadow made the shape which was circular shape it was circular shape so this is how he was able to say that earth must be spherical in shape okay now after them the uh, another indian person okay uh, you must have heard the name aryabhatta okay he was also india's famous mathematician as well as he was astronomer even he also proposed that earth must be spherical in shape okay then of course pythagoras aristotle those people also proposed that earth must be spherical but they were not able to give the 100% proof that earth shape is spherical so then how do we know today or how people later accepted that earth must be spherical okay so what proofs we had to give in order to tell that or in order to prove that earth is spherical in shape now let us look at this the most and very very not most one of the most important proof dear students if the earth was flat like this okay now uh, please uh, look at this diagram very carefully suppose this this is water okay and suppose this is a land over here and let us say you are standing here and you are looking at a sheep coming towards you if the earth was flat you would have been able to see the entire sheep coming towards you but that does not happen if you stand on a seashore okay if, if you are standing over here on a seashore first you are able to see only the front part of the sheep when the sheep will come to this particular point you will be able to see now the other part of the sheep like this and when it will come here then you will be able to see the entire sheep okay so you can see initially you will be able to see this part then when it comes more further towards you then you are able to see the top part and when it comes further towards the seashore you are able to see the entire sheep because the shape of the earth is spherical so please look here uh, suppose you are standing here 
and a sheep is approaching from this way so if you are standing here dear student at this point here you won't be able to see the sheep okay but when the sheep will start coming towards you first you will be able to see that this part then it will come towards here then you will be able to see this part and when it turns down then from here you will be able to see the entire sheep okay so this is the first proof that earth is spherical in shape then proof number two pole star dear student please remember pole star is directly over your head only at the only at the north pole if earth was flat and if pole star is here then suppose you you are here in usa i am here in india and somebody here in japan so for all of us the pole star would have been what above our head but that does not happen the pole star dear student if this is the earth please understand and if this is the axis of the earth here is a north pole so only to the person standing at the north pole for him the pole star is directly above his head anybody who is standing here near the equator above his head pole star won't be there so he has to see at this side in order to see the pole star this is another proof that the earth must be spherical in shape because pole star is seen directly overhead at the north pole now my question to you what will happen if you stand at the south pole will you be able to see the pole star now dear students south pole is here and suppose you are standing at this point here you won't be able to see the pole star at all you won't be able to see this is another proof that earth must be spherical in shape okay so if the pole star is here so only to the people okay who are above this will be able to see the people who are below this won't be able to see the pole star above them okay that is another proof that earth must be spherical in shape then third proof during lunar eclipse as i already told you the shadow of the earth which falls on the moon is seen very is seen circular and only the spherical objects are able to cast the circular shaped shadow okay now the uh, fourth and very very important very important proof is circumnavigation of the earth now what is the meaning of the word circumnavigation okay circumnavigation means to move all around the earth okay now suppose i take this one object in my hand okay and uh, if i stand here and because this object is circular in shape so when i start moving when i take a complete circle i come back here that is possible only if the object is spherical in shape so again if i take uh, these hands like this okay this this hands together in spherical shape so when you start moving this way so you will be able to come back to this point after completing the entire right. so magellan was one um, sailor okay and he began his journey dear students from one part of the earth like this okay and then he was so sure that earth is spherical in shape so he began traveling and after completing that entire round his crew came back to the place from where they had started so magel now actually uh, when the journey began dear student magellan was not able to complete the entire journey because when they arrived at one of the islands the island people thought some uh, people have come to attack them so uh, there was a big fight and in that war magellan got killed on that island 
but his crew members completed the remaining journey so therefore magellan is still given the credit of uh, completing the circumnavigation he did not complete the entire one he did complete some part of it okay so that means if you if, if he begins his journey this way all around the earth okay and when he reached almost let us say this part okay then he died on the way okay because of the war but his crew members then later on completed the journey okay now next another very very interesting experiment was carried out at a place called bedford canal experiment dear students if you take the uh, three sticks okay and now, now let us uh, put it this way suppose you put the uh, if the earth is flat and you could take the three sticks of the same size okay and you see them from a very far away distance all of them will be seen to you of the same height here but because earth is a spherical so what will happen now see this so because earth is spherical in shape so when you put one stick here the another stick of the same size and another stick over here the middle one appear taller than the other two that will be possible only if the earth shape is spherical so i will demonstrate this for you suppose uh, this is the spherical part of the earth okay now i take here two sticks of the same size okay same size stick here the sticks are of the same size i put one stick here and i put another stick here okay or you can take this example okay now because this part is spherical in shape okay here if i put one stick one stick here dear student at side and one stick uh, at this particular point this one will appear taller even though both of them are of the same size c but one of them will appear taller to you because of the spherical shape on which i had kept it so similarly in a bedford canal experiment also the same thing happened okay that is another proof that our earth is really spherical in shape okay now imagine if the earth was flat like this completely flat like this then what would have happened suppose here i am standing in one country you are standing in another country and now if the sun rise had taken place then for me also it would have been sunrise for you also it would have been sunrise if the sun was here then for everyone of us there would have been afternoon and when the sun will go down here it would have been sunset that means there would have been same time for the sunrise and the same time for sunset but we know that does not happen when it is day in india it's night in usa this proves that dear student that happens because of spherical shape of the earth okay that means what will happen over here that because the shape of the earth is spherical so if my these my, my fingers are suppose are pointing towards you now on them here the light is falling so these parts of the finger there is light so here is the daytime but opposite side here the light will not reach i am talking about this part so the side which is towards me there will be the light time so but when the earth will start moving this way okay so that time when my other fingers will come in front of you here there will be the sunrise and this part because it is going to go behind there will be sunset so we have different time for sunrise and sunset because earth is spherical in shape okay the different timings for sunrise and sunset at different places on earth is an indication that our earth is really spherical in shape now let us look at the next example or next proof 
This is the ultimate property, a student. Aerial photographs. Aerial. Okay. So now you can see the photograph of the Earth taken from the surface of the Moon, and you can see here in the background the Earth as a perfect sphere. Okay. So that is the ultimate proof that Earth is spherical in shape. So pictures taken from satellites from by the astronauts. Okay. This is that. Uh, this the, the, this is surface of the moon okay and in the background here you see the earth okay it's a proof that yes our earth is seriously very girl in shape now let us look at one more example gravity now uh, in physics you must have studied that gravity is a force of attraction okay if earth was if earth was flat what would have happened okay let us say here is center of earth okay let us say i am standing here and you are standing exactly above here okay this is you this is me so between me and center of the earth the distance is more between you and center of the earth distance is less so you would have experienced more force of the earth because you are closer to the center and i will be experiencing less because i will be away from the center but that does not happen everyone on earth experience the same force of attraction and that is possible because earth is spherical so this is center of the earth suppose now this is person number 1 person number 2 over here so whatever is this distance same is this distance also same is this distance also so everyone on earth experience almost same force of attraction because earth is spherical in shape okay So because of that spherical shape okay now suppose here is the center of the earth where this finger is there so what would have happened from top here till the center and from bottom till this center okay here the distance would have been same okay so because of spherical shape of the earth this center would be experiencing same force of attraction by the gravitational force that is possible because our earth is spherical in shape okay now uh, there is one more uh, proof for the spherical shape of the earth and that is the launching of artificial satellites okay now please remember that when these satellites are launched okay the scientists make assumption that earth is spherical in shape and they are going to send the satellite to move around the earth so they carry out those calculation considering that earth shape is spherical and a satellite will be moving around it so whatever calculations they carry out by considering the earth is spherical in shape those calculations are absolutely accurate which means the earth must be spherical in shape so in this way dear student we can give so many examples about the spherical shape of the earth you can also think about one more point okay if possible go to a top of your building okay wherever you are living or if if possible go in a very open place and look at the extreme end of end right in front of you there you will find the sky seems to be turning upward like this touching the earth the place where it appears to touch the earth is called horizon at that horizon you will find this perfect spherical shape of the earth okay that is another example to prove that yes earth is really spherical in shape okay students